Hi, YouTubers and what shavers everywhere. It's MargaretGeorgeTune.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things. What do you got this morning? Hang on, I got a brand new coffee, courtesy of your Beth Jones. Beth, thank you very, very much. Hang on, folks. This is an awesome coffee. My gosh, absolutely fantastic. All the way from San Antonio, Texas, Cafe Ole by H-E-B, Heb. And this is their creme brulee. I believe that's how that's pronounced. This is a ground medium roast, but it is absolutely fantastic. I love this. This has naturally and artificial flavors in it. It is a medium bodied, it's medium bodied with sweet vanilla flavor and slight caramel finish. Right there, 100% Arabica coffee. Boy, this is absolutely awesome awesome coffee here's what they have to say on their uh, on the side of the on the side panel i'll let you get a screenshot of that our cafe ole flavored coffees are tailored to our customers preferred tastes and aromas uh delight in each specialized flavor and enjoy trying them all it's absolutely fantastic and on the other panel here i'll let you get a screenshot of that as well uh they write here uh, we begin with high-quality Arabica beans harvested from legendary coffee-growing regions throughout the world. Uh, they are then roasted with precision and care to bring the artisan difference to your home. Absolutely, fan absolutely fantastic. It really is a terrific, terrific cup of coffee. Cafe Ole Creme Brulee. I highly recommend this. This is absolutely wonderful. Uh, I have been sneaking in. <laughs> I want to. I want to take the first sip on camera, but when I when I cracked open the bag to make a pot of this, uh, the aroma just grabbed me, and uh, I've been drinking it before cameras rolled. You know, setting things up, going over my show notes. <laughs> it's fantastic. Hang on. Yeah, absolutely. And we're using our Been There coffee mug. From Starbucks, which was generously sent along to the channel. Again, Beth Jones. Bye, Beth Jones. Thank you very, very much for the mug, uh, Beth. Really, really do appreciate it. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a, a the, a, this morning's coffee and mug, courtesy of Beth Jones. Thank you very, very much, Beth. And as we like to say on the show, uh, a good hot coffee, a trusty mug, let the caffeine go to work, gentlemen. Yes, absolutely. I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. Thanks very, very much for tuning in again. I really, really do appreciate it. Hey, if you're taking me along on your morning commute, thanks very much for the lift. I really do appreciate it. Those of you out there who are listening to the podcast version of the Monday Morning Mailbag, thanks very, very much for tuning in. Adjust those earbuds and enjoy the show. Wow, we have got a great show for you this morning. We've got some great, great shaving tips this morning. We have got a shave den visit of sorts. Great comments in refill. Wait until you see what we have in the 10,000 subscriber giveaway update. My gosh, the generosity of the viewers out there is just Wonderful. I am so, so grateful. Uh, we are doing a spectacular 10,000 subscriber giveaway, and it's all due to the uh, generous contributions of viewers out there. My thanks to those viewers and everyone out there for supporting the channel. Really, really fantastic. So we also have some really, really new great stuff in wet shaving gear, and we also have some wonderful uh, questions and comments and just all in all, a great, great show this morning. So again, get yourself a cup of coffee. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things. And let's kick the show off like we do every week with a viewer morning shaving tip. Well, this morning's shaving tip comes from viewer Aaron Watson. And Aaron writes, Hello, Mark. I hope you are doing well. I want to pass along a shaving tip that has helped me for several years. I have been wet shaving since I was in my early 20s. Starting with the art of shaving soap and brushes, I have grown to use both double and single blade razors today. No more cartridges for me. My shaving regimen is different from most people's. I only shave some days. 
I usually grow a full beard, then shave it off and start the process again. With sensitive skin, I found that using clippers would cause a lot of skin irritation. What I have found that works great is to wash my face, use a hot towel, and then apply some beard oil or conditioner. This helps reduce the irritation. Thanks, Aaron Watson. Hey, Aaron, thanks very, very much. I really appreciate this shaving tip. I was a bit curious. I emailed him back for a little clarification, and he replied, Hi, Mark. Thanks for the reply. So for me, there is a set of repeated steps. For the clipper to remove most of the growth, I face wash, hot towel, then oil. This helps provide lubrication for the blades. For the close shave, I wash, oil, then a hot towel. The heat opens the pores and helps with a smoother shave. Hey, thanks very, very much for the clarification on this, Aaron. Really, really do appreciate it. So there you go, folks. For those of you out there who grow a full beard and then periodically shave it off, here's a really nice routine that will result in less irritation or no irritation at all. I know of a few folks who uh, will grow a full beard over the winter, and then when spring rolls around, they'll shave it off. And I know one friend in particular, when he shaves it off, he comes away with a little bit of irritation. He says, yeah, I got a little bit of irritation here every single year. I'm going to pass this regimen uh, on to him to see if it helps uh, when he grows that beard over the winter and then the following spring shaves it off. So thanks very, very much for this, Aaron. Really, really do appreciate it. A great tip for those of you out there who want to grow a full beard and then periodically shave it off using clippers and then a DE razor. Absolutely fantastic tip, Aaron. Thank you very, very much for passing along. And to say thanks for you and only you, an original signed George sketch. So please email me your snail mail address to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com, and I will send this to you post haste. And if you out there would like an original signed George sketch, just email me a shaving tip. Email that shaving tip to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com. And if I use it here on the Monday Morning Mailbag Morning Shaving Tip, viewer morning shaving tip, you too will receive an original signed George sketch. So Aaron, thanks again for a really neat shaving tip. Really do appreciate it. Well, we have an extra shaving tip this morning, and it comes from viewer James Sefton. But before we get to that, uh, before I forget, I wanted to mention that in that previous shaving tip that uh, Aaron Watson sent in, he mentioned using conditioner as part of his shaving process to uh, increase the glide and cut down an irritation. We talked about that in a previous Monday morning mailbag, using conditioner as a pre-shave. So Aaron's been doing that for a number of years. So thanks for confirming uh, how well the conditioner works, Aaron. Really do appreciate it. Well, as I said, we have an extra shaving tip, and it comes from viewer James Sefton. Uh, and he wrote, Mark, just a quick note. I drilled uh, six 3 16 holes around the cover for a little air and one in the very top so when inverted any water can drain have a great rest of the day yeah he's talking about the Thai uh, shave stick that was introduced to us by viewer Bart Bartlett and uh, James uh, is drilling a series of holes on the top here you can see from the photo uh, and that uh, so that when he holds it inverts it like this any water will drain out of there and some air gets in. And that is absolutely fantastic. Again, we've been talking about these Thai uh, alum sticks that are uh, they come in a really, really nice price point, And they are very robustly made. And uh, again, Bart Bartlett introduced us, these, introduced us to these. And uh, really a good bargain. So if you're looking for uh, alum stick in your uh, post-shave routine, check out the Thai shave sticks and check out... Uh, James Sefton tip on how to get some air circulating in there and also uh, to drain some excess water. So that water doesn't collect, uh, you invert it so the water doesn't collect here on the base and uh, loosen up the uh, product from the, uh, the base, that sort of thing. Uh, it's been recommended by Bart and some others that you just invert it like that and then let, it, let the water fall away. Uh, the addition of those holes is just absolutely genius, James. Thanks very, very much for uh, that shaving tip this morning. Really, really do appreciate it. 
Well, we have an extra, extra shaving tip this morning, and it comes from viewer Robert Ross. And Robert writes, Hi, Mark. Johnny, who is the owner of Lothar Grooming, recommends both Cetaphil or V as a face cleanser prior to shaving. He likens face cleansers to prepping an area where one would have surgery. In other words, he is a stickler for cleanliness. I have tried both products shown in the photo and slightly prefer Cetaphil. I just like the way it feels on my face. Johnny of Lothar has extremely sensitive skin and is very particular about what he puts on his face. So if it's good enough for him, it is good enough for me. It is available at drugstores. Hey, Robert, thanks very, very much for this uh, shaving tip. Really do appreciate it. Uh, so there you go, folks. If you are finding some pre-shave cleansers to not be doing the job for you, or maybe you find that they're a little bit harsh, maybe you do have sensitive skin, check out either of these products here, uh, Cetaphil and V. I think that's how it's pronounced, V or V. I think it's V. Anyhow, you see the, <laughs> you see the <laughs> name of it in the photo. Uh, and uh, both are very, very good. Robert prefers the Cetaphil. So again, if you have sensitive skin, uh, and uh, are looking for something to clean the face before the traditional wet shave because we know that that is a very, very good first step uh, in doing the proper prep for the traditional wet shave, cleaning the face. So if you're looking for something to clean the face uh, and uh, will uh, help you with, uh, if you have a sensitive skin condition, uh, check out these products, Cetaphil and V. Really, really do appreciate you passing that along, Robert. Absolutely fantastic tip. Folks, check out both of them. Uh, they're available at local drugstores, maybe even your grocery stores. We'll also have links to them on Amazon if you prefer to buy it online. Thanks again, Robert. Really, really do appreciate it. Well, this morning we have a shave den visit. Well, it's a shave den visit of sorts. Well, this is something you can add to your shave den. Let me put it to you that way. And it comes from viewer Chuck Price. And Chuck writes, hey, Mark, hope all is well. I just wanted to share a few pictures of some razors I have just finished. You are a big supporter of what I'm doing early on, and I really appreciate the help, exposure, and encouragement. I have moved up to doing rescaling of blades and full restorations. Your support was very helpful early on. Thanks again, Chuck. P.S., this might be a little push to try to get you started on straight razors. Laugh out loud. Uh, hey, those look absolutely beautiful, Chuck. And uh, folks, as you know, Chuck very, very generously donated a straight razor, a vintage straight razor to the 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway. We've shown it on the, uh, on the program in the past. I don't have it with me right now on camera. I don't want to drop it. I want to make sure that it's intact and in good shape. So I don't want to fumble with it on camera or anything like that. Uh, we will show it again when we put together all the price packages and that sort of thing. If you want to see it, check out an earlier Monday morning mailbag where we show the razor. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, Chuck continues here. Yes, uh, they are the latest additions, meaning the uh, razors that he has just shown uh, pictorially here. Uh, it has been a fun thing to do, and I want to thank you again for the support early on. Chuck, Chuck, absolutely my pleasure, and thank you for supporting the channel. Really, really do appreciate it. So, folks, if you're interested in these vintage straight razors from Chuck Price, you can contact him at breezyshaving at gmail.com. Breezyshaving at gmail.com. That's spelled B-R-E-E-Z-Y-S-H-A-V-I-N-G at gmail.com, breezyshaving at gmail.com. Chuck, they look absolutely beautiful. Thank you for supporting the channel. I really do appreciate it. And thank you for uh, sending these pictures along and letting everyone know that these straight razors are available to members of the wet shaving community. I really do appreciate it, Chuck. Thanks again. Well, here's your weekly reminder that the Monday Morning Mailbag is available as a podcast. Just get up to your favorite streaming service and search for Monday Morning Mailbag and more, Monday Morning Mailbag and more, and the Monday Morning Mailbag podcast, as well as our other podcast, Second Cup, should come right up. Both of those podcasts are available on Anchor, Spotify, 
Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Google Podcasts. So get up to your favorite streaming service and simply search for Monday Morning Mailbag and more, and the Monday Morning Mailbag podcast and the Second Cup podcast will come right up. And thanks to everyone who tune in and subscribe to those podcasts. I really, really do appreciate it. Again, both of those podcasts are available on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Google Podcasts. Well, big news, folks. Big announcement. The Ohio Wet Shave Meetup is on. And I received a message, and they said, Hi, Mark. Everything is on for the Ohio Meetup, September 30th, 2023. The location is River's Edge Cutlery, 4601 Lyman Drive, Hilliard, Ohio, 43026, from 11.30 a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. Vendors will be able to sell their wares this year. Shannon's Soaps is creating the custom soap again this year. City Barbecue for Lunch. Uh, Tickets are available at ohioshavemeetup.com. OhioShaveMeetup.com. So there you are, folks. An absolutely fantastic event on September 30th, 2023, the Ohio Wet Shave Meetup. And as they write here, uh, we are back for the third annual meetup at our new location. Rivers Edge Cutlery has joined us to graciously host this year's event on Saturday, September 30th from 1130 to 3. Uh, Rivers Edge Cutlery has graciously joined us to host this year's meetup. Vendors will be able to sell their wares and you will be able to peruse the vast selection of cutlery in the showroom. Ohio is fortunate to have three great soap artisans, Chiseled Face Grumatorium, Shannon's Soaps, and Spearhead Shaving, as well as Timeless Razor, producers of precision quality razors, and the Gentle Shave, the exclusive U.S. supplier of high-quality Italian-made shaving brushes by Zenith. We are excited to have the support of these hometown businesses. Columbus, Ohio's own City Barbecue will again be on the menu for lunch. If you need a vegan option, we will make accommodations. Again, Saturday, September 30th, 2023, from 11.30 a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m., Ohio Wet Shave Meetup. Again, tickets are available at ohioshavemeetup.com. Ohioshavemeetup.com will have the link below. I've already got my ticket. I hope to see you there. Well, as you know, the channel is approaching 10,000 subscribers. And when we reach 10,000 subscribers, we're doing this spectacular giveaway. And uh, all the uh, shaving gear... Uh, in the prize packages is being made possible by viewer contributions. So my thanks to all the viewers out there who have made this 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway possible. Now we received some other, (laughs) some additional items this morning. I'm really excited to show you what we have here. We're going to kick it off with something from viewer James Sefton. Now James mentioned in the extra shave tip this morning, uh, on how you can dry out that Thai alum shave stick by drilling some holes in the cap. Well, he sent along two Thai alum sticks. So uh, there you go. That this, this kicks off this update for the 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway. James, thank you very, very much for sending these along. Really, really do appreciate it. Uh, viewer Chris Witte. Now, uh, Chris uh, had a, uh, I believe last week, he provided a uh, shaving tip. And he sent along uh, contributions to the uh, 10,000 subscriber price package giveaway. So my thanks to Chris. And he wrote here in a letter, here is the Razor 99R for the 10,000 subscriber giveaway. Disregard the Phoenix Safety Razor box as it was a spare box uh, I had for protection in shipping. Okay, well, here it is right here, folks. And we're going to open this up. And I think it opens up on the other side. Yes, it does. Here is what Chris Witte sent in a Parker 99R. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Check that out. My goodness, that is beautifully chrome. Twist to open 99R with a lot of nice heft to it. Uh, And he says, um, uh, also enclosed 
uh, 25 razor blades. Now, let me show you those. Hang on, let me put this aside here. I'm going to put it back into its box here for safekeeping. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, so here he has the uh, razor blades right here. So he says uh, five of the Astra Blue razor blades, uh, five of the uh, Phoenix Shaving Strangelet, uh, five of the uh, Parker DE blades, uh, five of the uh, Voskod razor blades, and five Shark uh, Super Stainless razor blades. Wow. Uh, and as he writes here, should be a good prize for uh, a prize package. Uh, but the Parker is on the aggressive side with a 0.89 blade gap. It's mitigated by a limited blade exposure, though. Uh, have a great day, Chris Witte, uh, W-I-T-T-E. And I learned that that's how he pronounces his name, uh, Witte, W-I-T-T-E. Chris, thank you very, very much for sending along the Parker razor as well as the uh, razor blades. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you so very, very much. Uh, also arriving on my doorstep, uh, another contribution from viewer Jimmy V Photography. Jimmy V has been very, very generous uh, in uh, providing a lot of great uh, prizes and shaving gear for the prize package. Here's what arrived uh, just recently. Uh, a Henson razor right here. This is the Henson AL13 razor right here. How about that? Isn't that absolutely beautiful? It also comes with five razor blades right there. <laughs> absolutely beautiful. This is the Henson AL13 aluminum razor. I'll show it to you on the package right there. How about that? Absolutely beautiful. Uh, we have uh, used and reviewed used and reviewed the Henson razor on the channel. These are absolutely fantastic. This is the beautiful uh, chrome color or chrome plated version of the, uh, of the of the Henson Aluminum AL13 razor. Absolutely beautiful. And these deliver some really, really spectacular, spectacular shaves. So you get the razor and five blades, but also, also, he also donated RK blades, a pack of 100 RK blades, which are specifically uh, called for to be used in the uh, Henson razor. Uh, I believe these are made specifically for the Henson razor. So there you have the stainless double edge razors, the RK razor blades, 100 of them, and the uh, Henson AL13 razor. My gosh, thank you so much, Jimmy. Also, additionally, he also sent along a Captain's Choice coffee mug. <laughs> How about that? Absolutely beautiful, beautiful coffee mug. Now, this was all packaged very, very carefully, but for some reason, uh, what was inserted inside uh, were some, uh, a couple of samples of Captain's Choice uh, aftershave. But as you can see, uh, they broke. You can see all the broken glass there in the corner there, like that. And the uh, paperwork here that's inside the bag is soaked. And when I opened it up, I could definitely get the scent from this immediately sensing something was wrong and then I saw the shards of glass there. So I am not going to open this up to try to salvage anything. I'm gonna go ahead and discard this. My apologies, I don't know how it happened. When I unwrapped it, this was inside the mug and it was wrapped up, but I don't know, for some reason it just broke. And as you can see, it's wrapped very, very well. And I don't know why that is, I don't know why it broke. So it appears that both of them have broken uh, that's my best guess. I'm not sure, you know what, I know that this top one is broken. The bottom one here may be intact, but to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not gonna reach in there and chance it with the broken shards of glass in there. I'm just gonna go ahead and discard this. My apologies. However, at the uh, Maggard meetup uh, this past June, I did go to the Captain's Choice uh, table and uh, I picked up some uh, shaving soap samples. So we're going to include these shaving soap samples in place of that, uh, those, those broken bottles of aftershave. So here you're going to get Captain's Choice Eucalyptus, uh, Bay Rum, and Captain's Choice 
Captain's Choice Italia. So these three shaving soap samples will go along with the uh, with the mug, and uh, you know because they're in plastic cases, they shouldn't break <laughs> when I insert them into the mug for uh, shipping, as you can see right there. So that's what we have from Jimmy V Photography. Absolutely beautiful. My thanks this time around to James Sefton, Chris Witte, and Jimmy V Photography. Absolutely fantastic, wonderful, spectacular additions to the prize package giveaway. So my sincere thanks and heartfelt appreciation go out to the following folks who are making this 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway possible. Thank you to Jimmy V Photography, Beth Jones, Tyler Fike, Charles Price, Alex Lopez, Scott Martin, James Sefton, George Haven, Jimmy Day, Bill Murphy, Mark Bagwell, Zachary Norton, Wesley Kirby, Heiko Shaves, Chris Witte, everyone at Pretech, and all the folks at Vikings Blade. These are the folks who are making this 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway possible. My sincere, heartfelt thanks to all of them. Thank you very, very much. And as always, thank you to all the viewers out there. Thank you for subscribing, for sharing, for commenting. You make this channel and the Monday Morning Mailbag possible. My sincere thanks to everyone in the audience out there, to all the viewers for, again, making this channel possible. Thank you all very, very much. Well, what do you know? Coffee's getting low that time of the show. Let's go back for a refill. Well, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. I hope you went back for a refill. I sure did. Hang on one minute. This is absolutely a delightful, delightful cup of coffee. My thanks again to viewer Beth Jones for sending along Café Olé Creme Brulee. This is absolutely fantastic. I love this coffee. Love the aroma. Love the flavor. Uh, love the body of it. It's absolutely fantastic. Thank you very, very much, Beth. And also enjoying it in the Starbucks Been There coffee mug that Beth Jones also very kindly sent along to the channel. These are available on Amazon. And uh, they're terrific. So if you want to give um, a been there coffee mug to the coffee lover in your life, uh, you know, whatever home state they live in, you can get a been there coffee mug for that state, whether it's Ohio or uh, California or New York, uh, Pennsylvania, that sort of thing. And uh, all the artwork on the mug highlights the, uh, the history, uh, the, uh, the, the sites, of that particular state. For instance, we have here uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, uh, the state flag, um, you know, the state bird, uh, all kinds of great things. Uh, football, state flower, that sort of thing. Uh, all Ohio, been there, uh, coffee mug, and you can get one for any state in the union. They really, really are terrific, terrific mugs. So my thanks to Beth Jones for very kindly sending this along. It's been a favorite. And uh, Beth, thanks very much for making my coffee journey possible this morning with coffee and a great mug. So thank you very, very much. Again, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. I uh, really, really do appreciate you tuning in to the YouTube broadcast or the podcast. Thanks very, very much. Hey, let's kick things off this morning with something from 10 Fluid Ounces 30 Minutes who wrote, Bob Ross's idea to use distilled water is a physically sensible one. And I have been trying this too in the last several days. I do see a difference. Now, uh, Bob Ross uh, shared with us his slurry method of building a lather. And he improved on that recipe by using distilled water. And he said that he got a better lather. And 10 fluid ounces, 30 minutes, seems to agree that distilled water is giving him a better lather. So let us know in the comments below if you've tried distilled water when you're building a lather and the kinds of results you're getting. So 10 fluid ounces, 30 minutes. Thanks very, very much for confirming Bob Ross's uh, distilled water step in his recipe to be a, a good one. Uh, viewer Bill Murphy wrote, great shave uh, and 3MB as usual. 
The Wilkinson Sword razor blade case looks just like the case I got with my PAA Allen block. Last week, we talked about uh, some Wilkinson Sword blades. They came in a, a razor case. I was trying to locate the link to that. I haven't heard back from the viewer yet. Once we get that, we'll link it below. But it looks like a great case to store Wilkinson Sword blades or any of your razor blades. And uh, Bill Murphy seems to think that it looks very, very similar to the case that the um, Phoenix Shaving um, Allen block comes in. I don't know if there's a difference in size, Bill, to be, to be perfectly honest with you. So we'll have to, uh, we'll have to see. Uh, he continues here, I recently received a Phoenix Shaving Scuttle Second. What a great deal. The only imperfection I found was a very small imperfection on the side of the handle. Barely noticeable. I got a great, warm, rich, creamy lather very quickly. Have a great week. Hey, Bill, that's absolutely wonderful to hear another viewer who's very satisfied with those Dreamscape Scuttle Seconds. They are fully functional. They just might have a little slight cosmetic imperfection somewhere uh, on, the, uh, on the item, uh, but uh, they still make great, great lathers, and they come in at a really, really nice price point. Before cameras rolled, I checked the website, and at the time I'm making this video, they are still available, and they come in at a really, really nice price point, $23 and some odd cents versus $54 and some odd cents for a, you know, for a, a one that doesn't have any imperfections. But as we're finding out, even these Dreamscape Scuttle Seconds uh, have these slight imperfections that are barely noticeable, and they still do a great job at producing a wonderful, warm, creamy lather, and they come in at a great price, as I say. So, Bill, thanks very, very much for confirming how great a deal the Dreamscape Scuttle Seconds are. We'll have a link to those below, folks, if you're interested. And as I say, at the time I'm recording this video, they are still available. Get up there and uh, get one before they're gone because uh, people are discovering them and it looks like they li they're liking them and the imperfections you know, are not that noticeable. So check them out. Uh, this comes from Clarence Molina and he wrote, Mark, just want to let you know, I purchased a Rockwell T2 and wow, what a razor. The mechanics on that are so smooth. You definitely know when it's locked in and adjustment is as smooth. Did a three pass shave with Five days worth of face growth on, uh, well, he gives the date here. I'm not sure of the date, but <laughs> using a Parker Brush Vikings Blade Green mild razor blade and good old Tabak, BBS found me, <laughs> was using Vikings Blade Crusader before, a good razor, but that Rockwell T2 is phenomenal. Thanks for all you do. Hey, Clarence, I am so glad to hear that you love the uh, Rockwell T2. I like mine too. There are two versions of the uh, the T2, the chrome version, which is what you sound, which which sounds like what you have, and also the T2 in stainless steel. Just know that the T2 in stainless steel is a little is tuned a little milder than the chrome version of the T2. I don't know why they did that, but they did, and I get great shaves with both of them. But I do find that because the T2 stainless steel is tuned a little milder, and you can check this out. Uh, at sharpologist.com, Mantic59 has a review on this, and he actually has a chart comparing the uh, the aggression of uh, the T2 and the T2 stainless steel side by side at the different adjustment levels. Uh, anyhow, um, I find that with the T2 stainless steel, I turn it up. I turn it up just a little more for my shave. I turn it up just a little more, and with the T2 chrome, I t I turn it down just a little bit. <laughs> so that's how kind of how I compensate uh, for it. But yeah, both of those razors are great. And the T2, yeah, it's an absolutely wonderful, wonderful razor. I'm so glad to hear that you're enjoying it. So thanks for uh, confirming this. Viewer Leslie Fitzer wrote, now he wrote something similar in a previous Monday morning mailbag. Let me share his comments with you one more time here. Hi, Mark. Great Monday morning mailbag. I purchased an Edwin Jagger starter kit when I first returned to DE shaving. Unfortunately, the DE89 in the kit had a long handle, uh, but as I hadn't used one for a few years, I didn't realize the shorter handle was better for me. I soon started looking around for other razors and bought a 6C followed by an Outlaw, which didn't work out as I could never get the blade to align correctly. Fortunately, the retailer 
uh, after a lot of toing and froing, agreed to swap it, and I had an Envoy. Excellent. Recently, I saw the Edwin Jagger 3D on sale at a really good price and decided to buy one. Wow, what a difference. Uh, the 89 wasn't a regular in my rotation, but the 3D certainly is. They have the same head, but the 3D has a shorter handle. Amazing how the handle length affects the shave. If the long handle had an open comb head, I could put it to use as a rake. <laughs> keep well and keep safe. Now, uh, previously in the Monday Morning Mailbag, Leslie sent something similar to this, e to this comment, and uh, he was referring to it again, and I'm glad he did because I was scratching my head, 3D, 3D, 3D. What is the Edwin Jagger 3D? It's the 3D diamond handle. It's the knurling on the handle. Uh, uh, Mark Bagwell sent along the information. Thank you very much, Mark. This is the 3D diamond knurled handle from Edwin Jagger. Uh, and as Mark says here, they are really good handles, slightly longer than a Mercur 34C. Mark, thanks very much for sending this along. I had a little bit of a brain hiccup when I saw Edwin Jagger 3D. I wasn't putting two and two together. It's the diamond knurled a 3D diamond knurled handle for Edwin from Edwin Jagger, slightly longer than a Mercur 34C. Now we know why Leslie likes it so much because it's not as long as an 89, uh, a DE89 from Edwin Jagger. So Mark, uh, thanks very much for that, and uh, Leslie, thanks very much for sending that comment along again, allowing me to clarify it this morning on the refill segment. Really, really do appreciate it. Viewer Damon Rosario wrote, "Shark are my favorite blades." Bought a pack of mixed blades, and when I got to the shark, it was noticeably sharper and smoother. Yeah, I like the uh, shark super chromium. I also like the stainless steel. As you saw this morning in the 10,000 subscriber giveaway, Chris Witte uh, donated some blades, and the uh, shark super stainless were in there. Those are very, very good, very, very sharp. And also, they are very good in that T2 stainless steel razor. I tend to like the stainless steel blades in that T2 stainless steel razor. I think it gives it a little more efficiency because of its milder tuning. So uh, thanks very much for that, Damon. I really do appreciate it. Viewer Matthew Bentley wrote, Mark, I got to tell you, the Chieftain 5 BC is the way to go. With a feather blade, it's just magic. I had a shave today as I was holding off for it to arrive, and a two-pass with three days' growth was just absolutely deleted. The 5BC is the third razor I got after watching you. Funny enough, I ponied up for the metaphor from Phoenix Shaving. Your video came out the day after I bought mine, and after watching and later using it, boy, am I glad I did. Try a feather in your 5BC. It might be magic for you, too. Uh, will you ever use Persona again? Uh, that's easily a top three blade for me. Do you still enjoy Personas? What are your current favorite blades, or if not a favorite, an old reliable if you have one? Uh, Matthew, first of all, I got to tell you, yeah, I absolutely love the 5BC. The 5BC is really, really terrific. I haven't used this in a while. Now, the thing is about the 5BC, uh, this razor head uh, is kind of being adapted to the newly redesigned uh, Chieftain razors. Uh, the Chieftain Chrome razor here and the Odin razor right here. We recently did reviews of both of these and they are fantastic. And the, uh, the razor heads are similar uh, to the razor head on the 5BC. That's my understanding. Although the 5BC has a different handle, different knurling, and it is heavier. Now, on my scale, I got my scale right here. We're going to do this in ounces. The 5BC weighs in at, uh, let me turn that back on. The 5BC weighs in at 3.56 ounces on my scale. Now, the Vikings Blade Chieftain Chrome version weighs in at 3.34 ounces, as does the Chieftain Odin right there, 3.34 ounces. So uh, there you have it. The Chieftain 5BC has a little more heft to it. Uh, completely different knurling on the handle and uh, you know, has that same great razor head, uh, similar razor head, 
uh, that you find on the newly redesigned Chieftain Chrome and Chieftain Odin Edition. Boy, these razors are absolutely fantastic. And I agree with you. The 5BC is absolutely wonderful. When the 5BC was released, I did a review of it. And I happen to say then, and I, I say again with the newly redesigned Chieftains, uh, if anyone was going to make a razor better than the original Chieftain, it would be Vikings Blade. And the 5BC definitely, definitely was <laughs> a better shaving razor than that original Chieftain. The original Chieftain I love, but boy, this 5BC was just absolutely fantastic. And again, you can see it's the, it's the same razor head that they've adapted to the, uh, the newer design of the Chieftain. Now, the newer design of the Chieftain, it's not only the razor head, it's the weight of the handle and uh, that sort of thing. And uh, really, really fantastic. I've, again, I had a shave with both the Odin and the uh, chrome version of the uh, Vikings Blade uh, Chieftain razors. Uh, they ran past this past week, so check those out if you miss those because they really did deliver some nice, nice shaves. Really, really enjoy it. And a feather blade, yeah, I, I, I may try a feather blade in the... Um, and the Vikings Blade Chieftain 5 BC. Also, the other, the other Chieftains as well, because as I say, the razor head, very, very similar. Uh, if not identical, it's been adapted in some way. At least that's my understanding. So yeah, really, really fantastic, fantastic razors, and they come in at really, really nice price points. As far as Persona Blades, yeah, love Persona Blades. Those Edison, those Persona Edisons are great. I love the Persona Reds and the Persona Blues. Uh, all reliable blades, my gosh, those Gillette Swedes. Thank you again to Beth Jones. Those are fantastic. The Wizomet Super Iridiums, like those a lot. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, yeah, there are so many great blades out there. Off the top of my head, the Strange Lift Blades from uh, Phoenix Shaving are very, very good. Also, I like the uh, the uh, mild razor blades from Vikings Blade, as long as we're talking about the Chieftain uh, razors. You know, it, there, there are so many great blades out there. Uh, it really is amazing. That's why I like the traditional wet shave so much, because there are so many great options out there. You can tune your shave from day to day, week to week, and still get a really, really great, great result. So thanks very much for that, Matthew. You really do appreciate it. Hey, uh, we uh, have a comment here from Andy Amaya. This was in regards to the uh, review I did on the... Um, now, I wasn't pronouncing it correctly. <laughs> he corrected me on this. Uh, this was the um, uh, Ma... The, the Mosse. The Mosse Razor. Uh, and this was the Mosse Mano Razor. Uh, Single-edge injector razor looks very, very similar to the supply uh, single-edge injector razor. Andy wrote, Hi, Mark. Great, detailed, and informative review. Thank you for all the comparison and tips you give with this razor. That's always helpful to new users to understand how new razors should be handled. The, uh, oh, well, he says the mono by Mosse, I believe it's, I think it's Mosse. Uh, is a piece of art, in my opinion. Thanks again for the great review. Yeah, it is a really a terrific, terrific razor. And I've had several shaves again after I did that review. And I got to tell you, I'm still on the original blade. They said 20 shaves with that blade. Well, I'm up to about shave number six right now with that razor. And yeah, the blade is still going strong. I'm kind of... Uh, I kind of want to inject a new blade in there. I want to try the uh, Supply Black Label blades. I also want to try the Schick Proline uh, B20 blades in there. But this blade is still going strong. So, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully at some point I'll be able to uh, get a new blade in there and continue uh, shaving with it and kind of compare how those other blades perform in that razor. But yeah, it's a terrific razor. And the big highlight is, is that it's stainless steel. And uh, that really is a big, big selling point. Stainless steel has got a lot of heft. The weight of the razor does all the work. Absolutely. So if you're interested in getting a supply-like razor, but getting it in stainless steel, check out the uh, the Mono by uh, the Mosse. I believe that's how it's pronounced. So thanks uh, very much for that, Andy. And check out uh, the Wet Shaving Store at wetshaving.store where you can get that razor. So thanks again, Andy. Really do appreciate it. And that wraps up this week's refill segment. Thanks very much to everyone who contributed. Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week.
Okay, let's check out some new wet shaving gear. Viewer Mark Bagwell checked in with a review of W.M. Newman's Bay Rum. And he writes, did someone mention Bay Rum? Okay, let's be honest. I love Bay Rum, but so many are synthetic smelling and I don't like those. So I'm really particular about my Bay Rum and W.M. Newman Bay Rum checks all the boxes. The soap is vegan based and quickly works up a deep, rich lather that is very slick. The post shave is incredible. My skin has never felt this moisturized. The soap is made with a special blend of 100% natural essential oils and extracts that have been a closely held family secret recipe for over 120 years. Pure Caribbean bay oil, citruses, and spices are carefully blended to create a rich, authentic bay rum. And I don't mind telling you, after using the soap and aftershave, my wife thinks I smell good. <laughs> So if you're looking for a bay rum that will make your spouse snuggle a bit closer, then you want the W.M. Newman Bay Rum. It's offered in the shave soap, shaving cream, pre-shave oil, aftershave lotion, and balm. There is even a body lotion in the bay rum, so they got you covered. Hey, Mark, thanks for an absolutely great review of W.M. Newman Bay Rum. I'm definitely going to check it out. I'm probably going to go with the shave soap. I have already reviewed some of the W.M. Newman shave creams on the channel. They are very, very good. They make great, great lathers. But uh, this time around, uh, I'd like to try a shave soap. And the Bay Rum shave soap, I think, is a good one to start with. So, folks, we'll have a link below to W.M. Newman where you can find their Bay Rum shave soap and everything Bay Rum. Thanks again to Mark Bagwell for a really, really terrific review. Mark, thank you very, very much. Now, in a previous Monday morning mailbag, viewer Stanley Piaskowski told us about the 3D printed razor case from Zach Norton for his Rockwell 6C slash 6S razor. Uh, and he added a little detail that didn't make it into last week's show. I wanted to share it with you this week. Uh, he wrote, Mark, Oops, I almost forgot. The razor head compartment of this new 6C slash 6S storage case doubles as a razor drying slash display station. And there is also a slot provided for storing up to two new razor blades. Zach really outdid himself with this design. And he is a very nice fellow to work with. Thanks again for all your efforts with your YouTube videos, 3MB and Second Cup podcasts. Very entertaining and informative regards, Stanley J. Piaskowski. Uh, Stanley, again, I owe it all to the viewers out there, the audience. They contribute some great, great information, and it makes this show possible. So all the credit for all that great information goes to all the viewers out there. Uh, now, this reminds me that Zach Norton uh, has extended his promotion of his 3D cases. So get up to uh, Norton Custom Design, that's where his Etsy store is, uh, and use the code 3MBAG. That's the number three, capital M, capital B, capital A, capital G, 3MBAG, and take 15% off until September 1st, 2023. And he really has expanded his product line of 3D printed razor cases. And as you know, he has also donated uh, 3D printer razor, 3D printed razor cases for the 10,000 subscriber giveaway. So my thanks to Zach very, very much for that. So again, get up to uh, his Etsy store, which is at Norton Custom Design, and use the code 3MBAG, and you'll get 15% off until September 1st, 2023. So my thanks to Stanley and also to Zach Norton. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Really, really do appreciate it. Well, in the previous Monday morning mailbag, viewer Beth Jones checked in and she gave us a heads up that the Gillette Menorah Golden Shave Razor Blades are for sale at Bull Goose Shaving. This week, she checked in again and wrote, Mark, I received my order of Menorah Golden Shave Razor Blades and I've written a review of those blades. Here's my review. I use the Henson Mild V 2.0 razor and supply shave cream. 
I am a lady wet shaver, and while my shaving needs are not as demanding as gentlemen wet shavers needs, the Menora Golden Shave razor blades are very sharp and provided me with a very smooth, efficient shave with little to no blade feel. For comparison, I have also used the Paul Silver razor blades and the Super Iridium razor blades with the Henson V 2.0 razor. And when I use those blades, I got a small amount of blade feel, but I also got a sense of just how sharp those blades are. With the Menorah Golden Shave razor blades, for me, there was no sense of how sharp these blades are. Also, in comparison to my beloved Gillette Swede razor blades, I believe the Menorah blades are just a tad sharper and smoother than the Swedes, but both blades will provide excellent shave results with little to no blade feel. For another comparison, I have also used the Filosa razor blades, and I would put the Filosa razor blades on par with the Menorah Golden Shave razor blades. As always, your mileage may vary. As always, thank you so much for everything, Mark. Oh, she also followed up with this. I used the Menorah blades in the Parker 78R, and I got exactly the same shave as I got using the Henson V2.0. Smooth, efficient, and with no blade feel. Hey, Beth, thanks very, very much for this review. Beth also very, very kindly sent along to the channel uh, Menorah Golden Shave Razor Blades. So we're going to get a review done on these. I'm really, really intrigued now based on Beth's review. I love the Gillette Swedes. I love the Filoso Razor Blades. Looking forward to my take on how the Menorah Razor Blades stack up to those blades. Thanks very, very much for the great review and for sending along the blades, Beth. Really, really do appreciate it. Thanks again very, very much. Viewer Bill Murphy checked in with a review of Phoenix Shavings' Gingerbread Man. And Bill writes, I understand this is not a new scent, but as I have only been wet shaving for about a year and a half, it is new to me. I had my first shave with it yesterday morning. Since it's Phoenix Shaving CK6, it performed as expected and I got a great shave. The scent is just like gingerbread cookies with a bit of bay rum thrown in. I love this scent, but I will be putting it away to use again in the holiday season. This was a last minute release to celebrate Christmas in July. As of this writing, it is still available on the Phoenix Shaving website. Here is the scent profile as listed on the Phoenix Shaving website. Cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, molasses, brown sugar, vanilla, and atomic age bay rum. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. And uh, Bill wraps up by saying, looking forward to tomorrow's 3MB. Hey, Bill, thanks very, very much for reviewing Gingerbread Man. Really do appreciate it. Yeah. To celebrate Christmas in July, thanks very much for the heads up on this because I was not aware that it was available. So glad you sent this review along. And folks, uh, again, I'm confirming what Bill wrote here. As of this video, it is still available on the Phoenix Shaving website. So if you want to celebrate Christmas in July, check it out, get some, or get some and put it aside for the upcoming holiday season as Bill is going to be doing. So Bill... Thanks again very, very much for a great review. Really, really do appreciate it. Viewers Bill Murphy, Beth Jones, and Jamie Horn sent along a heads up on a brand new safety razor from Phoenix Shaving, the Starling V3 Single Edge Safety Razor. And Bill wrote, Mark, did you see this? The Phoenix Starling V3 Single Edge Safety Razor, polished 316L stainless steel. Not a bad price for stainless steel, $99.95. Have a great day. Beth and Jamie also sent along similar messages. My thanks to all three for the heads up on this. Unfortunately, it sold out really, really quickly. I mean, within a day of it, the announcement, a day or two of the announcement. So we will link to the page where you can get on the notification list for when this is restocked. It looks like an absolutely fantastic and beautiful razor. As they write on their product page, it gives us great pleasure to finally release the all stainless Starling V3 SE. We've kept the same blueprint for our modern gem type razor, 
but we further refined the design and now offer it in polished 316L stainless steel. Yeah, this is a gem type razor. We've talked about these great vintage gem razors of yesteryear that really, really deliver some really, really wonderful, wonderful shaves. Here is a modern gem type razor from Phoenix Shaving. Also comes with two base plates, open comb and closed comb, polished 316L stainless steel. Comes with a flare tip handle so you can remove the tips and replace them with different colors. Also replace them with bomb tips if you want to. It weighs 131 grams or 4.62 ounces. And it just looks like an absolutely outstanding, outstanding single edge safety razor. They have tweaked the design a little bit to really, really kind of smooth out the shave, it sounds like. I'll let you read all that information on the page. We'll link it below. Get on a notification email list so that when this is restocked, you'll be able to, you know, buy it right away. These, it sounds like these were snapped up. I mean, no sooner do I did I get these messages from Bill and Jamie and, and Beth. Uh, did I find out that this was, was absolutely sold out. So they went really, really fast. So we'll link it below. Get on the notification list. My thanks to Bill and Beth and Jamie for the heads up on this brand new razor from uh, Phoenix Shaving, the uh, Starling V3 Single Edge Safety Razor. Thanks again, folks. Really, really do appreciate it. And that wraps up this week's new wet shaving gear segment. My thanks to everyone who contributed. Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's get to some of these questions and comments. Viewer Jason Miller checked in and he wrote, Hi, Mark. How are you doing? Uh, quick thought. Did you try to see if the Supply SE base plates can fit into the Mose Mono Razor? I'm curious if they can be interchangeable. Uh, Jason, I have not. As you know, and many viewers out there know, I don't like to swap out base plates or caps or handles or anything like that. I like to keep the razor the way it originally came. I don't like to swap out the base plates or anything like that. I'm afraid I'm going to lose track of what goes with what, and I won't be able to reliably switch things back to their original configuration. That's why I don't swap out things. Uh, there are a couple of rare exceptions, but really, for the most part, I don't like to swap out base plates. Now, this is the Mono Single Edge Injector Razor that Andy and Maya and the Wet Shaving Store very, very kindly sent. It is in stainless steel. I do have a stainless steel supply razor uh, that I purchased shortly after uh, getting and reviewing the uh, Supply SE razor. I was so impressed with this razor. I thought, well, why not get the uh, stainless steel version while it's still available? Uh, but you know what? I have not used it uh, because this SE is such an outstanding razor. This is what I've been using, and I really, really enjoy using this razor. Now, I have another version of the Supply razor that comes with the three different uh, base plates, and I have used that. But really, my go-to is the Supply SE with the Next Stop technology right there. Really, really do like it. So, no, I'm not, I'm not interchanging or... Uh, you know, swapping out base plates, anything like that. I like to keep things as is. Now, Jason wrote back a little while later and said, Hi, Mark, keep your Supply SE stainless steel razor. I'm hearing that people are paying $300 plus if you have a Supply SE stainless steel razor in the box. They are collector's items. Well, I, <laughs> I never realized that it would become a collector's item at all. I just decided to buy it before... Uh, it was out of stock because I wanted to try that supply injector razor in stainless steel. And again, I never, I really haven't used it because uh, I like the Supply SE so much. And, you know, now I have the, uh, the, the Mono razor in stainless steel. So there's really no reason to open up the Supply stainless steel razor. And again, I'm not going to swap out base plates or anything like that. But that also led to a little bit of a conversation between Jason and I regarding uh, you know, modern day uh, collector, collector items, modern day razors that can become collector's items. 
And I happened to remark about that. And uh, Jason said, I feel like a lot of the modern razors are dupes or homages to vintage razors. From my little knowledge, it seems like nothing is new under the sun in wet shaving. Some exceptions are Gillette ABC Pocket Edition razors. I never knew about this razor. So my thanks to Jason for sending along that little bit of uh, information. Folks, I'm going to link uh, this vintage razor below on various eBay uh, stores where you can get a look at it. It's absolutely a fantastic looking vintage razor. Never knew about it at all. Wow, that is really, really fascinating. And again, this is why I love the traditional wet shave so much because there's this great, great history with all this great wet shaving gear. Now, just as an aside, talking about modern day uh, razors that have become collector's editions. I guess you could say I got a couple of others that are now collector's editions, one of which is uh, this from Above the Tie, this razor from Above the Tie in stainless steel. I happened to buy this just as they were folding, you know, closing their doors. Here it is right here. My gosh, this is uh, an absolutely beautiful razor in stainless steel. It's absolutely beautiful. I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember what's this. What this is called? This is the. Um, oh yeah, this is the. Uh, here it is, right here. This is the SB90, the SB90 uh, stainless steel razor from uh, above the tie. They're out of business. I don't think you can get these anymore. I just got under the wire to get one of these. So I guess you could say that this is now a collector's item as well. And the other one that I think you could say is a collector's item, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it's this one here. I did a review on it. I don't think I've edited it yet. I, I, can't, I don't think I've edited the review and posted it yet, but I want to show it to you. This is from Blackland Razors right here. This is their Dart Razor. I may have talked about this before. Yeah, I think I have talked about this before. And this was a limited edition run where uh, they were just... They brought it back. They said, this is the last time we're going to make the dart. So get it while you can. And I happened to buy one. And it came with a stand. And the stand and the, uh, the razor are, are numbered. So you know which one. So you know where you are in the production run. I think they were going to limit it to 200 and 250 of these. And I think mine is, yeah, mine is 136, it looks like. 136. Is that what it looks like there? Yeah, so the uh, the razor and the stand are both labeled 136, if I'm looking at that correctly. So that's kind of, I guess you could say that's kind of a collector's item, unless they decide to bring it back one more time, <laughs> at which, you know, it's not going to uh, uh, be much of a collector's item. But right now, I think it is. And it really is a neat razor, and it delivers a really, really eff efficient, efficient shave. We get a really, really close shave with this. I don't know if this is a daily driver for me, this razor. It really is a little, as I recall, it has a bit of aggression to it. But again, I did a review of it, and I'm going to have to find that review and post it and edit it and that sort of thing. My apologies for not posting the review on the Blackland Dart uh, when I should have. Uh, some of these reviews just kind of slip through the cracks, and I forget to uh, edit them together and post them. So if I find that in my archives... I will get that edited and posted so you can see how the Blackland Dart performs. Because, hey, you know what? Who knows? Maybe they'll bring it back. You know? <laughs> That's, uh, that would be kind of a neat thing. Uh, but, yeah, I guess that there are some razors out there that are made in the 21st century that are now becoming collector's items. So uh, kind of neat. But, again, I'm not sure if the collection, if the collector aspect of it uh, really amounts, is as great or is as, is, let me put it this way. Okay, let me back up. I'm not sure if the collectability quality of it is as great or as value as, or as prized as some of these great, great vintage razors. And uh, again, uh, the collectability can change uh, with uh, the companies deciding, hey, we're going to run these again. So supply might say, you know what? We're going to run those stainless steel razors again, those stainless steel supply injector razors again, and give everyone a chance to buy them. We'll, we'll run another 500 of them. So now <laughs> you're not going to get $300 for it because supply is going to be running that razor again. I'm not saying they are. I'm saying if they decide to do that. Same thing with any of these other razors. 
you know, the folks at Blackland might say, hey, you know what? We're going to bring the dart back one, one, one more time, one more time. So, uh, yeah. So I think the, uh, the, 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 the value and the collectability of, of a vintage razor is so much greater because they're not made anymore at all. and There's no chance of them ever being made uh, and, and coming back. Uh, at least not as they were made years and years ago. So, uh, Jason, thanks very, very much for an interesting uh, question and a uh, great comment and introducing us, at least me, I'm sure a lot of viewers already knew about the Gillette ABC Pocket Edition Razor. Really, really interesting. He also adds here, I hear the factory was in New York City and was burnt down in the 1920s, I think. I'm not sure about that, folks. If you know any more about the ABC, the Gillette ABC Pocket Edition Razor, please comment below and let us know. Jason, thanks again very, very much. Viewer <laughs> Bob Barreau checked in with the following comment. I was watching a panel discussion on TV about sleep divorce, where couples have separate bedrooms so they could get a better night's rest. The panel disagreed with the concept, but unanimously agreed on separate bathrooms. Gotta have a shave den. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, thanks very much for the comment, Bob. And that begs the question, folks, do you have your own separate shave den, which is yours and yours alone? Maybe you share another bathroom with your spouse or other members of the family, but just curious to know, do you have your own dedicated shaved in. Please comment below and let us know. Really looking forward to all the great answers. Bob, thanks again for a really, really terrific comment, which will bring about a really, really terrific discussion. Thanks very, very much. Viewer Tuco Salamanca, that's his screen name, uh, sent along this comment regarding the Supply Pro adjustable razor. I'm including this because we've been talking about the supply razors and of course, the uh, Mono uh, single edge injector razor, which is similar to the supply design. Uh, and here's what uh, Tuco had to say. I'm not liking the adjustment dial on this razor. Uh, when my hands are wet, the adjustment is difficult. Uh, must adjust when the hands are completely dry. Also, the black label blade doesn't seem like a good fit for me. Hopefully, the Schick blades will work Better. Well, when it comes to blades, your mileage may vary. I like the black label blades, and I'm looking forward to trying those in the, uh, the mono injector razor, as well as the Schick uh, Proline B20 blade. Now, uh, Tuco, if you want to try a really, really good blade and injector razor, try those Schick Proline B20 blades. The only downside is it doesn't come with a key to actually inject that blade into the razor head. You're going to have to remove it and put it into a, um, uh, a razor case that has a key so you can inject it into the, uh, the razor. Now, uh, in regards to the adjustment dial, yeah, I've had that same kind of uh, uh, situation every now and then where there's a lot of slickness there. But you know what? All you got to do is use that old alum trick. You know what? Get some alum, wet your fingers, your thumb, your fingers, or whatever, whichever you're using to adjust that dial, and that will actually improve the grip and you'll be able to turn that dial even with some really, really wet, wet hands. But yeah, I agree. Uh, if your hands are slick, this dial can get a little uh, difficult in uh, moving up and down. But try the alum. Try the alum. Get an alum stick, an alum block, and I'm using my thumb to uh, adjust adjust the, uh, the wheel. So uh, I would run my thumb uh, over the alum. And uh, to be perfectly honest with you, uh, if the alum trick works to improve the grip on a razor handle, because it does improve the grip on these razor handles uh, when I'm not using the grip sleeve, uh, I'm sure that that will also help to improve the grip, so to speak, of that thumb when you want to go ahead and uh, adjust the, um, the aggression of the Supply Pro adjustable razor. Uh, I like this <laughs> adjustable razor a lot. This is another one that I that I use quite a bit, which is why, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the stainless steel version of the Supply Razor hasn't been used because I really, really like the Supply SE, and this Pro really is a terrific, terrific version 
of the uh, of the supply injector razor. Really, really terrific. And you can just you can adjust from one one to six, and it has micro steps there as well. So you can make subtle little adjustments in the uh, in the level of aggression, or you can make some big jumps from going say to one to four, or you can go say one, one point one, one point two, that sort of thing. So yeah, this is a terrific, terrific razor. I recommend both of them. They're both they're both really, really very, very good. And the Mono stainless steel razor, this is a terrific, terrific razor as well. Uh, very, very similar design to the um, Supply SE. You can see it's got a longer handle than the Supply, okay? And it definitely has more heft. The weight of the razor, of this Mono razor, will do all the work. It really is fantastic. And this blade really has held up for many, many shaves. They say 20 shaves. I don't know if I'm going to get 20 shaves, but I've, I've gotten a good five shaves already, and that blade is still going strong. So uh, some just some great, great choices uh, for the traditional wet shave out there, whether you're using a, a double-edge razor blade or a single-edge razor blade. We talked about the Starling from Phoenix Shaving, which is a single-edge uh, razor, uh, the Supply, uh, the mono, uh, I mean, absolutely fantastic, fantastic time to be doing the traditional wet shave. There is so much available. As I say, you will find a razor, a shave soap, a brush, a blade, etc., that fits your skin type and your vault. It is just simply a great time to be doing the traditional wet shave. So Tuko Salamaka, your screen name. Thanks very much for the comment. I hope that helps in some way with the adjustment dial on that Supply Pro. And also try those Schick Proline B20 blades. I think you'll like those a lot. I, I, I love them in a vintage Schick injector razor. Really, really made that vintage Schick injector razor. Really, really sing. Check out my review. I'll link it below. Thanks again, Tuco. Really, really do appreciate it. And that wraps up another Monday Morning Mailbag for this week. Thanks so much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Please share, please subscribe, please like. Hit that bell so to give you a yell the next time I upload a video. Comment below, let me know. Check out all the wonderful artisan soap makers and sellers that you see displayed on the bottom of the screen right now. They make and offer some wonderful artisan shave soap. They also offer some wonderful wet shaving gear to enhance your traditional wet shave. The next time you're online, please take a moment, pay them a visit, I sure would appreciate it. Thank you very much. Also, check out my Amazon product page at amazon.com slash shop slash Mark Zerady, where you'll find all the Amazon listed products that I review on this channel. Organize and categorize so you can find everything in a snap very easily. I'll leave you with this laugh. Hey, we have another double take cartoon puzzle this week. Try to find the differences between the two cartoon panels. If you need more time, just pause the video or try to find all the differences before time runs out. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Make it a great week.